Hello everyone, it's Hoplite Mike. I hope you're all doing well. Today we are taking a look at DCI Last Alliance, which is a Lord of the Rings mod for Medieval 2 Total War. It's one of the many sub-mods of Third Age. DCI Last Alliance was released in beta in 2020, but received an update in June 2022 as part of its full 1.0 release, which at the time of making this video is about 5 months ago. The mod is set during the Second Age of Middle-earth and focuses on the War of the Last Alliance, which is the battle we see in the prologue to the Lord of the Rings films. The campaign starts in the year 3429 of the Second Age, which is one year before the Battle of the Last Alliance and about 3000 years before the War of the Ring, which is the main story in the aforementioned Peter Jackson films. There are 13 playable factions which reflect the prominent powers at the time. We have the United Numenorean Kingdoms of Gondor and Arnor, ultimately under the control of Elendil. There are three elven factions, with Lindon being the most powerful, ruled by High King Gil-galad, but with Glorfindel and Cerdan as important characters. Numenor and Lindon are the two primary powers of the Last Alliance, and effectively what the mod is built around, so they are the most central factions to the DCI Last Alliance campaign. The other two Elven factions are Lothlorien, led by King Amdir, and Erengalen, ruled by Orifer, who is Thranduil's father from the Hobbit films. Lothlorien has the unique Mirror of Gladriel mechanic, which allows you to view random parts of the map each turn. Both Lothlorien and Erengalen have access to the secret Elven trails which means you can move through Greenwood more efficiently. Lastly, all three Elven factions have the Sail to the West feature, which effectively allows you to kill a character in the campaign, with the boat taking them to Valinor and off the map. We then have a Dwarven faction, the Kingdom of Khazad-dûm, ruled by Durin IV. As well as Moria, they hold territory in the Blue and Iron Mountains. Interestingly, the Dwarves of Khazad-dûm are the only faction that can survive as a horde. Moving on to the traditionally evil factions, we have Mordor, Harad, Rune, and the Goblins of the Misty Mountains, which are all allied to one another. Mordor is of course ruled by Sauron, who at this time wields the One Ring and he is able to call invasions similar to a crusade. The Goblins of the Misty Mountains are unique in that they can only get access to new units through achieving certain goals, such as holding a specified number of settlements or fighting with a certain enemy. Harad is the only faction to officially have two kings or rulers, and Rune functions as a confederation of tribes. When you take a new settlement as Rune, you have a choice of which tribe you want the settlement to follow, and based on this choice that will give you access to different units. Additionally, we have the Men of the Mountains faction that can sway between good and evil through changing their culture. Whichever side you choose has an impact on the units you can recruit and your ability to join either Sauron's invasions or the counter invasions for the forces of good. We of course know the Men of the Mountains in the Third Age as the Army of the Dead. The Hellmen in the North start at war with khazad they are an evil faction in the mod and get sent special generals by Sauron to assist in their wars. The special generals are called Baldogs, and you must be allied with Mordor and the Orcs of the Misty Mountains to receive them. They allow you to recruit Orc units and strengthen your forces for fighting against Sauron's enemy Numenor. The Wild Men of Ened Waith are also an evil faction. They are considered to be underdeveloped technologically and they have to conquer Numenorean settlements in order to unlock technologies and certain units. Lastly, we have Ravanian, which is a faction in the East, also known as the Northmen. They are effectively a forces of good faction, although not allied to anyone at the start of the game. This faction has a special Prince Ancillary and trait for its generals. There are four Prince positions available, one for each region within the Kingdom, and therefore four generals can possess the trait and ancillary at any one time. The main feature of the mod is the Tall Arkin, which is basically a crusade-like feature for the factions of good. Using the Tall Arkin, the Numenorean Kingdoms and Linden can call a crusade on a settlement of their choosing. 
factions with the same culture as Numenor and Linden, which in practice is the two other Elven Kingdoms, can join this tall Archon, as well as other good factions with a different culture, as long as they are allied to the calling faction. So for example, if khazad or Ruvanian are allied to Numenor when they call a tall Archon, that faction can also join the Crusade. The point of the mod is to simulate the War of the Last Alliance through the Tall Archon. Using this crusade-like feature means Numenor and Linden, as well as any of their allies, can converge on Mordor in a coherent manner and on a united front. If you are playing as one of Numenor or Linden yourself, there are scripts in place to guide you through the process, which starts with either moving Elendil to Mithlond or Gilgalad to a Numenas. Playing as one of these two factions will allow you to call crusades and control which settlement is targeted. If you are playing as one of the other elven factions in Lothlorien or Erin you can't call your own crusade until you have first completed one called by Linden or Numenor, at which point you will get a herald to be able to call one yourself. The important point here is that only Numenor or Linden can call the first Tol Arkham or crusade. The DCI in the mod name stands for Dunedain Counter Invasion, referring to the Tol Arkan being a counter invasion to Sauron's invasion west. The mod also features extensive ring mechanics. If you are a good faction and take control of the ring, you have the ability to destroy it at Mount Doom, which is what the other forces of good factions would expect you to do or you can keep it for yourself and see the other good factions begin to turn against you as you fall deeper into corruption. Certain notable characters such as Isildur and Galadriel have the ability to turn into a Dark Lord or Queen when they've had the ring for long enough. That will instantly make all of the other good factions declare war on you and provides a fun end game challenge. There are four turns per year to reflect the fact the campaign has a narrow focus on the War of the Last Alliance and the map itself is based off Third Age Total War but there has been some changes to align it with the Second Age. Osgiliath, which is a ruin in the Third Age, is bustling and thriving at this time. Minas Tirith, which we all know from the films, is known as Minas Arnor at this point and Minas Ithil has just fallen to Mordor before it later becomes known as Minas Morgul. At this time, Isengard belongs to the Numenorians and is still in its pre-corrupted state. Certain other prominent locations at this time are Anuminas, the capital of Arnor, and Amunlanc as it's known before it becomes Dol Guldor, which we know from the Hobbit films. Two of the showcase siege maps for the mod are Isengard and Minas Ithil, which have been edited to reflect their Second Age appearance. With Minas Ithil just being taken by Mordor, it still has some remnants of Gondor remaining, and Isengard is looking lush and green as it did before the War of the Ring. There has also been some regions added, such as Sitjak and Brimfoldweg. This is to avoid bottlenecks, and also to reflect the different fighting hotspots in the Second Age compared to the Third Age. In total, there are 146 regions, and there are custom models and maps for all the major settlements of the time. The rosters are well fleshed out, in particular Numenor, which has an area of recruitment system that allows it to obtain different region-specific troops from Gondor and Arnor. Additionally, taking Umbar as Numenor will give you access to the Umbar Magi, and the starting settlements of Belfalas and Horondir will also provide other unique troops. The UI is Lord of the Rings themed and there is very little that breaks the immersion here. As part of the 1.0 release in June 2022, there was a number of bug fixes and new models implemented. However, one of the most exciting new features is the Balrog script. When the dwarves dig too deep, which means basically building the Mithril Mines, there is a small chance of the Balrog spawning just outside khazad where you'll have a battle on your hands to defend it. The model itself is based on the book version, and I'm a big fan of the distinctive look, in particular the flaming sword. With all that being said, I hope you give the mod a go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.